Good morning. So today I'm going to be talking about constructivism. It's a very popular theory of education that we are trying to implement more into the classroom. I want to talk about some of the differences between traditional classroom practices that a lot of us experienced in our education and how constructivism says those things can be improved, how they can be done differently, and kind of just the general ideas of constructivism. Also going to be talking about the PAR model and some other um, constructivism related education topics. So according to the early childhood book that we're using for ER 470 written by Dr. Branscombe, um, it's entitled Early Childhood Curriculum and Constructivist Practice. The Just a good basic definition for constructivism is that instead of students just taking what a teacher says and just applying it and just saying that, okay, this is so, they memorize it, regurgitated on test, that's not what constructivism is. It's saying that it's the theory that teaches that children have to construct their own knowledge and make it meaningful to them by taking what they already know and building this new lesson, this new idea on top of that and making it connect to what they already know. So constructivist teachers must understand that their students come into the classroom with prior knowledge and prior experiences, and these are going to be different everywhere you teach, whether you teach in Limestone County and, you know, somewhere in rural Alabama, even in Huntsville. If you move to Huntsville and teach, it's going to be different, especially if you move somewhere, a big city like New York City. Their children are going to come to you with different experiences. You have to, you know, understand where they're coming from and teach in a way that it makes sense to them. And so you have to build on that, build on that prior knowledge and also give them the opportunity to engage in meaningful tasks. So the big picture goal of constructivism is that teachers have to make the lessons being taught relevant to their students. The reason I picked this picture for this slide of the presentation, this is actually a picture of some farmland in Limestone County because this is a topic um, that is very relevant to our students in this area. You know, when you talk about things, um, farming is one of those things our students are very familiar with. This is one of those topics that when you're discussing ideas in the classroom, this is one of those prior experiences that you have to understand this is where our kids are coming from. This is the kind of the way of life that a lot of us are accustomed to in this area. So this is, that's kind of the prior knowledge, prior experience, one of those for this area for teaching here. So the four main founding fathers of constructivism are Dewey, Piaget, Bruner, and Vygotsky. These four um, theorists look, kind of worked in the last 100 to 200 years. They looked at the traditional classroom and the practices being done and said that this is not working for students. This is not the best way for students to learn. And so they said that students need to be taught in a way that they are engaging in meaningful tasks building on that prior knowledge and experience. Dewey in particular emphasized um, allowing the students to engage in practical, um, hands-on, manipulative type tasks. So this is kind of where all of this started. They worked through and developed the theory of constructivism and have been working in that time period to try to incorporate it into classrooms. So how is constructivism different from the traditional classroom. So the first area we're going to talk about is curriculum. Curriculum is just the overarching um, plan for what you're going to be teaching in your classroom. So when constructivist teachers sit down to plan their curriculum to guide the children, they approach by um, the lesson by looking at any changes that they need to make depending on their learners. You know, they're looking at where are my learners coming from, what are their needs, and how am I going to meet them? So they look at their prior knowledge, the students' prior experiences, and build on that. And then in the curriculum, instead of it just being, you know, I'm going to teach it, they're going to learn it, they're going to repeat it back to me, they are going to allow their students to engage in more meaningful tasks and, you know, have more application type experiences than just lecture, repeat from the students. So the second area we're going to talk about is this: how the students um, work in constructivism. So student, the constructivist classroom is much more student-centered. 
the awareness of the teacher has the student's um, prior learning and interest in mind and it helps the learning be much more individualized and the students are also much more engaged and involved in learning and constructivism and falling into how the students work. Constructivism utilizes the inquiry approach to learning in a lot of ways. This is where the students ask questions and they identify a problem, but the, stu the teacher just doesn't say, okay, well, this is the answer to that question, or this is the answer to that problem. The teacher guides them and allows them to work through different tasks and activities to come to their own conclusions, find their own answers, and solve their own problems. So the answer is much more meaningful to the students when they get done. And the children in constructivist classrooms often work together in small groups, so they're building that um, good social skills, good collaboration team building activities. Um, they use hands-on manip manipulatives in these tasks oftentimes, and it's a huge part of how the constructivist classroom uh, operates. So the teacher's role in constructivism is they act as a guide. Um, they build on that prior knowledge and they, a big thing is they provide those experience for, experiences for students. Um, so they come, students come in with some experiences, but they don't come in with every experience. They need to solve some of the um, problems, answer some of the questions they have. And so the teacher still has objectives that they're trying to, you know, help the students um, meet these certain standards in the curriculum. So they provide the experiences and the guidance for the students to come to the conclusions, answer the questions, and learn the content that they are needing to learn in that grade level. Um, so assessment in constructivist classrooms is much different than how oftentimes we were assessed. It's not just a teaching lecture, you take the test, it's uh, much more authentic. Um, teachers do a lot of formative assessment, that, which, which involves um, obser observations of the students, uh, completing these authentic tasks in the classroom. They still do have to take some just paper tests. You know, that's still required. They still do that. But um, they have to actually watch the students doing these tasks, and it's much more comfortable for the students because it allows them to not feel as pressured and these activities are much more natural to them. So now we're going to talk about the PAR model for education. This is related to constructivism in that the biggest majority, it's kind of, I actually built a, par, a pie chart into this presentation and when you look at the pie, the biggest section of this is the application part of the lesson, not the teaching and not the reviewing. So it emphasizes that idea that Dewey, Piaget, Bruner, and Vygotsky said that, you know, students have to actually um, do things, have to, they have to uh, participate in the learning, they have to build on what they know and actually make that knowledge their own. So. PAR stands for Present, Apply, and Review. So the PAR model, part one, is present, and this makes up 35% maximum of the lesson. So this is where the objectives are taught, the knowledge um, is shared, and skills are demonstrated by the teacher. Anything that the student needs to know to apply this knowledge. So PAR model part two is apply. And this is a 60% minimum for the part of the lesson. So if you look at that pie chart, this is where the application comes in. It's a huge chunk of the lesson. And this is where the tasks are applied, the task knowledge skills theories are applied by the students. This is where they're actually doing hands-on, learning how to do what was just taught. So if you teach, what needs to be taught, allow the students plenty of time to actually apply that knowledge. Then this last part, part three, is review, is 5%, is a 5% minimum of the part of, of the lesson. So this is where the teacher summarizes, clarifies, and allows the students to maybe have a question and answer session. 
So this is where the students can ask their questions. Of course, you allow them to ask questions all the way through, but this is a designated time for that. So now I have an example of a PAR lesson, and this kind of goes back to my first picture where I was talking about how farming is a big part of our area. So say I was going to teach a lesson, and my central question is how do seeds grow? So the first part, number one, I present. So this is where I would talk about how seeds have to grow with soil and sunlight and water. And that process where they make their own food is photosynthesis. And I would go through that kind of, you know, a lesson. Number two, I would allow most of the time of my lesson for the students to apply that knowledge. So this is where the children do the actual activity. They're seeing this in action. So here, I would probably take my kids, you know, either outside and have like a school garden or maybe even have them little cups, you know, somewhere in the classroom, even let them sit them on their desk with soil, you know, and we could plant seeds and see how that process um, happens and let them watch the little plants sprout up. This is where it becomes meaningful because they actually see this happening for themselves. They plant the seed. Review, this is the end of the lesson. This is where I would summarize. Um, I would clarify anything the students didn't understand it and allow them to ask those questions. And we could have those conversations and about what they learned and what they observed. And that would be kind of the summary of that lesson. But you can see in this lesson that it's a huge part of children's learning is that they actually get to participate and do whatever you're telling them about. So that's the whole idea of constructivism, is that students actually um, learn in a meaningful way and construct that knowledge for themselves rather than just taking what the teacher says as truth. So that's my presentation on the constructivism. Thanks.